Hey guys, Jack Parr from The Jack Parr Show. More tips and tricks coming your way. Today we're talking about how to take a typical shop light and turn it into a bank light or a Kino Flow. Um, and we're talking LED, not fluorescent. We're gonna make an LED bank light for you today for all around 50 bucks per fixture. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. From that magical place called Hollywood, it's the Jack Parr Show. Starring Jack Parr. Join us weekly for tips and tricks on filmmaking as well as reviews on cool camera gear. Also, we will be doing interviews with special guests like Billy Bob Thornton, Vern Troyer, Louie Anderson, and the Jack Parr Show Band. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Jack. Hey guys, welcome back. So what we're talking about today is how to build a LED bank light or Kino Flow for 50 bucks. Um, mine are two tube. If you want to build a four tube fixture, it's going to cost you a hundred bucks. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I was fighting reflection in my eyeglasses and I can't see anything without my eyeglasses. Uh, some directors will have uh, the talent take off their glasses. Sometimes they'll tip them up, but that makes the eyeballs smaller and it just looks weird to me. Um, or you can spread the lights out or lift your lights up, but I'm working in a small space. I have limited headroom in here and I have limited uh, width. Did a little research and uh, did a little test and I found out that I could get rid of the reflection with a couple bank lights. So we'll be covering reflection and eyeglasses in another video. So be sure to subscribe below, okay? So go out and buy a T8 uh, fluorescent fixture. I'm using four foot fixtures down below in the comments um, in the description of this video is um, all the things you need to purchase to create this light. So you need a, a four foot fixture. You're gonna need two LED daylight balanced bulbs, uh, preferably 5,000 K. Um, also, if you want to mount them, um, I bought PVC and I'm gonna explain how I did my mounts. I have wall mounted fixtures for my studio but you can mount them on a stand as well. First, you're gonna start by disassembling the fixture, like I've done in this video here. Um, you're gonna take out the ballast, and I took out two of the sockets on one side. These bulbs only require power to one side of the fixture. In your typical fluorescent fixture, you need power on both sides, but with LED, you only need power on one side of the fixture. So I'm gonna go through the step-by-step -step process on how to assemble the fixture. So step number one, you're gonna remove the knockout from the fixture. You're gonna replace that knockout with a plastic bushing, which is listed below as a push-in cable connector. Snap the connector into the hole where the knockout was. The smooth end will be on the outside of the fixture. I purchased an eight foot lamp cord, which I'm gonna to use to power the fixture on. One thing that's very important is that you know which side is neutral and what side is hot. The neutral side is the fat side. The hot side is the skinnier side of the plug. Push your lamp cord through the bushing and pull out about 10 inches of wire. Next, you're going to take one black wire and one white wire and slip it into the slots of the connectors that were provided with the light bulbs. This is only necessary on two of the light bulb sockets. You're going to do this on only two sockets. So make sure one black one and one white one are on each socket in the same pattern.
once this is done, you're going to glue the two sockets on the one side in place with a, I use a little Gorilla Glue, and then I take a piece of gaff tape, uh, cloth tape, and to hold them in place, like so. Like I said earlier, you are only going to have power to one side of the fixture. It'll look like so. So two sockets, two black wires, two white wires. The next step is very easy. You're going to wire the two white wires from the sockets to the neutral on the lamp cord. The neutral on the lamp cord is the one without the writing on it, which is the big side of the plug as I showed you earlier. And then you're going to take two of the black wires and wire the two black wires to the hot side of the lamp cord, which is the side with the writing on the cord. I also put a little electrical tape on the two wire connectors just to give it a little bit more security. If you have comments or questions, feel free to email us or comment below. This is what it'll look like when you're done wiring it. Don't worry about the sockets. Once you put the bulbs in, it'll keep the sockets in place. Don't worry about the sockets on the other side. I left the old ones in place and you can leave the wires hanging there. Um, there's not going to be power running to that side of the socket. Like I said, these light fixtures are only powered on the one side. You will not add wires to the sockets on the other side if you do decide to replace them. Now we're almost done. We're going to insert the tubes into the fixture. Very important to keep the AC input, which is marked on the bulb, on the powered side of the light fixture. As you can see here, it says AC input on that side of the bulb. That's the side that's going to go into the powered side of the fixture. And now we're almost done. We're going to reassemble the light fixture. Now I'm replacing the wire cover back into the fixture and it just snaps in place. Make sure the wires don't get caught in the cover. Before placing the diffuser back on the fixture, test to make sure your lights turn on. And as you can see, my lights are working fine. I like the diffuser because it throws off nice soft light on your talent and protects your light bulbs from breakage. My next step to show you is how I mounted my light fixtures on the wall in my studio using PVC pipe, a couple 90 degree elbows, and some one and a quarter inch PVC pipe with a couple C brackets and zip screws. Very easy to do. So you're gonna place the C brackets over the piece of pipe centered on the light fixture and put the self-tapping screws into the C bracket. Make sure it's secure, uh, but it doesn't have to be completely tight um, you want it to move a little bit. Now to start wall mounting, you need to find your stud. I have this tricky little stud finder I got from Costco. You'll see a link for it below. Once you've found the stud, go ahead and screw your cap into the wall. I drilled a quarter inch hole in my cap with a drill bit before screwing it into the wall. It makes it a lot easier. And just use a typical drywall screw to screw it in. Once you got the cap on the wall, now you can place your top mount into the hole and then take a level, level it up, and then you can place your second cap that you're going to use to mount the light completely on the wall. Yeah, be sure to level it out. Um, it's going to look nicer and it'll function better. Um, be sure to level it out and you want to hit the stud 
that is in line with that top cap. Now again, place your bottom cap in place. Once that's screwed in, you're ready to position your light. Do not glue these. Um, they'll be tight enough where they won't fall off the wall and they're removable. So you don't want to glue it because then you'll never get it off the wall without breaking the, the fixture. So just push it in place. Don't push too hard while you break the fixture. Um, get it in there. Get it tight. And now you can swivel it. I also hooked up a dimmer switch, which uh, is listed in the parts list below in the description. But there you go. You got 5,000K from like 1,000K to 5,000K daylight balanced light for shooting video for 50 bucks per fixture. So for $200, I got some incredible light. I got four light fixtures and I got two lighting, the green screen in back and two for the talent in the front. It took away the reflection in my glasses as you can see in these before and after photos and I improved my shooting space and I have more room to move around. If you have any questions, Feel free to comment below and I will get right back to you. It's an easy project and you shouldn't struggle to get through it. I do recommend basic electric skills to do this project. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel below. Share it with your friends, share it on Facebook. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we have jackparshow.com as well. Uh, thank you for watching and again like our video subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time on the Jack Parr show thanks guys and have a good day